Um, so my talk is titled uh, SSSD More Than an LDAP Client. Uh, first, something about me. I uh, work for Red Hat. I'm working on SSSD, which is what the talk is about, more or less full time. Um, that's, uh, the team on Red Hat is called Identity Management. We work on stuff like uh, Active Directory integration and, and so on. Uh, apart from SSSD, I also work on a cool testing project called CREP. We gave a talk about that with Andras on Friday. There is a video up. If you missed that, it's really worth watching, I think. Uh, that said, this talk is mostly about SSSD itself. Um, I actually had a bit different talk prepared before I arrived here, um, because this is my first time on the SUSE conference, and I really didn't know what to expect. After Um, so after seeing the first talk, I realized that what I had prepared wouldn't probably the, be the best. Uh, it, the first talk was more user-centric, and there's so many developers here that I changed it a bit. Um, so the talk is more about the APIs that SSSD has, about the ecosystem of project that we have. Um, hopefully it's more useful this way. And there's a bunch of demos. Um, I tried to walk through the demos yesterday on the hotel, uh, so hopefully they work. Should I stand somewhere else to avoid the, interrupt, the interference? Anyway, uh, there will be a bunch of demos. Uh, all the demos are working on uh, my devel environment running SSSD GitHub, so hopefully everything works fine. And the goal of this talk is to show you as developers how we can use SSSD to make your life easier. Uh, I think we solve some real world problems and I think not many people know what SSSD can already do. Of course, this way I hope to get more users. Um, ideally get more contributors, we love patches. And even if you find some issues, we love receiving bug reports because even that just shows that people are using the stuff. And of course, I want to make SSSD better for everyone. So really quick intro to the SSSD. Uh, SSSD is a system daemon. So it's a daemon that runs in the background, mostly as root. And it allows to access resources that are stored in directories. By directory, typically you mean something like LDAP or Microsoft Active Directory or, or Free IPA. And what SSSD can do is it can fetch data about users and authenticate as those users stored on the remote sites. This is typically what is done in large environments, universities, enterprises, and so on. Uh, so we mostly use LDAP, Kerberos for authentication. Uh, Active Directory, of course, is, is the king in enterprises. And traditionally, what we were providing were interfaces that are called NSS and PAM. So NSS displays information about, about users, and PAM is what authenticates users. Um, as a, so this was, also, this was all possible even before SSSD. There were modules like PAM LDAP, NSS LDAP, and so on. What SSSD gives you on top of that is that uh, there is a cache which provides both resiliency, so if the remote server goes offline, SSSD just falls back to the cache and keeps serving the data. Uh, there is an on-disk cache, which is not that great performance-wise, but since a couple of releases ago, we also have a uh, really fast in-memory cache that provides performance that is close to what uh, glibc had in, in the uh, NSCD daemon. And we can also cache credentials which is really useful for stuff like laptops. So you can use your identities from the remote server without actually having to store anything on the local machine in ETC password and ETC shadow. Um, now it's time for the first demo, which is, I will just show you what I use on my laptop. Let's see if I can get the mic here. So for this demo, I will just show you how I, uh, there we go, how I authenticate to my laptop because I use the, uh, the five. 
Sorry. Uh, really hard to get the pointer. Uh, here we go. So. Better? All right, so. This is my user. Uh, it's my fir first letter of my first name and my surname. It's what we use at Red Hat. My GID, UID, all the groups I'm part of. So this is what I use normally to log into this laptop. Now, check this out. I don't have the user start in ATC password. And obviously, right now, I'm not connected to the Red Hat corporate server. And yet, I'm able to log in. Um, At Red Hat, we use a lot of Kerberos. Uh, what SSSD can do for you if you log in, uh, if you log in offline, disconnected from the from the server, like I do right now in the conference, is it can remember the clear text password that you enter into the GDM or whatever you log in with, and remember it while you are offline in the kernel keyring. So it's not accessible outside to the user space, and SSSD detects uh, changes in networking. And once, in, once it detects that uh, the system is online again, it takes the password in the kernel keyring and does scan it on your behalf. So normally I just log into the uh, laptop completely offline, I connect to the VPN or put the cable in, then SSD finds out I am online, does scan it on my behalf and I can access all the services without, without passwords. All right, so with SSD, as I said, we support LDAP for storing user identities. We support Kerberos for authentication. We support a lot of additional functionality in directories that offer this functionality. Like with Active Directory, we support access control with group policies. I'll get to that later. Uh, the other directory service we support is called Free IPA. It's, uh, I'm not even sure if Free IPA is available on SUSE. Is it, Howard? No, not yet. So it's a, think of it as a Active Directory tailored for Unix systems, so you can keep your users, hosts, sudo rules, and stuff like that in free IPA, and SSD supports all these features kind of natively. Um, for authentication, of course, passwords is what's uh, used most of the time, but these days, especially if you are in some government organization or something where the security is tight, you really don't want to use passwords. So since a couple of releases ago, we support also one-time passwords. So we can use some RSA token or app on your phone to generate a numerical code. You need to type in both the pa password that you remember and the numerical code from the app. And in the past two releases, we also support smart cards. So we can put the smart card in uh, there was some work in GDM lately, I think, that even allows recognizing who the user is based on the certificate on the smart card. So SSSD would look at the certificate on the smart card, look up the user in the server, and then if you plug in the smart card, you don't have to type who you are. Just plug in the smart card and off you go. Um, I will do another demo now. Um, try to log in to the IPA server with one-time passwords. What just I reinstalled the develop VMs all the time, so it was such complaints, but it's fine. And let me display my notes just a second. Um, I prepared a bunch of notes so I don't have to remember how to type the command, just need to navigate to the uh, right directory, almost there. Right, IPA OTP. So 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I will use multiple monitors are harder than I thought to use. So I will log in as the administrator of the IPA domain so that I can uh, create tokens. First thing is uh, I added a user for the demo. The username is called OTP demo. So I'm just saying dummy user. Boom. We have a created user. I assign him a password. Just some silly. Yeah. And IPA by default creates all passwords as expired so that the user has to change them uh, on the first login and the administrator actually doesn't know what the user chose. So I select something less silly so that Palm lets me through. Okay. Now I'm authenticated as the user OTP demo. I can authenticate against as the admin. And now I actually create the token. No, actually, sorry. Uh, now I uh, created a, uh, now I modified the user so that IPA knows that this user is not supposed to just authenticate uh, with a password, but with an OTP token. And the last thing is create actually the OTP token. Now, so when IPA creates an OTP token, we have a phone app that's called Free OTP that allows you to just scan the QR code and uh, assign the token to the user on the phone. So what I need to figure out now is how to Scan the QR code from the projector. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, how do I move the terminal back to from from? Food? Yeah, here we go. Move to my. So we talked yesterday with Howard that maybe I shouldn't do live demos, and maybe he was right. Anyway, now I have the QR code on my laptop screen. I will scan it with my phone to pair the token with uh, with actually the app. So. Okay. Uh, maybe someone in the first row will be able to see that I have a new token here for the user OTP demo. Now let's move the terminal back. And now I just try to log in as the user OTP demo. So SSSD now knows that the user is supposed to use two-factor authentication and asks for the first factor separately. So I entered the password, and now I click the button on the phone app and try to enter the Log in with, uh, with one-time password. And I even got a Kerberos ticket, and now I can access all services uh, Kerberized. Uh, the cool thing that we are adding into the release that we are working on right now, which is not even released yet, is that uh, especially if you are an enterprise like some, some government project, you want to tighten some services, but not others. So we want to say that some important service like accounting or uh, HR system can only be accessed with two-factor authentication, but 
if there are some development systems, you don't want to bother developers to always, you know, take their phones and type the, uh, type the codes. So what we have is uh, called authentication indicators. So on the IPA side, uh, when I created the user and the token and so on, you can also manage services and you can say that for this service, for the HR or accounting system, only allow users with two-factor authentication and for those services running some develop systems, passwords are fine. All right. Uh, apart from logging into the system, SSSD also supports some uh, like rich functionality. Uh, we are able to download and cache pseudo rules. So the, in the same way as I uh, created the user on the IPA server, you can create pseudo rules. Uh, not only IPA server is supported for the pseudo rules, but also just plain LDAP. There is, if you take a look at the documentation in the sudo package, there is a schema that tells you how to load the pseudo rules into LDAP. So then you can just put all the pseudo rules into one central place. Sudo itself already allows reading these uh, policies from LDAP. What SSSD does on top of that is that you don't have to set separate connection with SSSD. You can just use SSSD that is already set on the system and you get caching. So if I wanted, I could use sudo rules delivered from some centralized location on this laptop even when it's disconnected from the network. We also added support for uh, group policies from Active Directory. I'm not sure how many of you actually know Active Directory, but group policies are really, really powerful there. You can set up pretty much anything, I mean, ranging from password complexity down to stuff like what the wallpaper is and whether the user is allowed to change their wallpaper or not. Uh, in SSSD, we only support GPOs for access policies. So if you have an Active Directory server and in the UI you click that these users are only allowed to log in uh, to these hosts using these services. SSSD will honor exactly the same settings as Windows clients do. However, the GPO engine that we built in SSSD is kind of extensible. So what I think would be a really nice project for anyone who's looking for some work is extend on that. And there are third-party projects like Centrify or Quest and stuff like that that allows you to uh, allow you to define Linux-specific uh, data in the GPO, like sudo rules can be defined on the, on the Active Directory site in GPOs. And I think this would be a really nice project for someone. I don't have personally time to work on that, but an idea. Uh, we also allow fetching SSH keys for users that can be stored in any LDAP server. It's just, a, I think it's just base64 encoded blob. In the, in, the, in the LDAP directory that SSSD is able to fetch, convert. And then in the open SSH package, there is a kind of a pluggable interface that allows calling any third party binary. So we call from open SSH, we call into SSSD, which calls into LDAP and delivers the SSH keys. With generic LDAP, you can do this for users. Uh, with free IPA, because IPA manages also the hosts, we are also able to deliver uh, SSH keys for hosts centrally. So I think it's time for another demo uh, about centralized pseudo policies. How much time do I have, by the way? I spent much more time than I thought on the first demo. Twenty minutes? Maybe let's get back to the sudo demo later then. I'm sorry, I, there's more stuff that I'm going to show and the demo, I mean, it just shows that I can define sudo rules in, in, in IPA and access them. I can show that later if we have time. All right. Um, service discovery and failover in big environments, you really don't want to hard code server host names into every client computer. Uh, usually DNS is used for that. There are DNS SRV records, so SSSD supports that. We support, if, if one of the servers stops working, we switch to another one. And we are able, if you define that that server is preferred, we are able to switch back to the preferred server. And uh, especially in Active Directory, they have a concept called sites. So we can tell that if you have an office in Nuremberg and office in Stockholm, you really don't want to uh, connect your Stockholm machines to some services in Nuremberg. So 
Uh, on the AD side, you are able to define that servers should only connect to local servers, and SSSD is able to honor that. So the whole reason I was talking about uh, the SSSD features was just to give you an idea what SSSD can do. There's a lot of it. There's a lot of problems we already solved. The thing is that SSSD, for a long time, until maybe last year, was only usable by the OS. We only provided interfaces towards the OS, like uh, NSS and PAM, which I showed you already. But the problems that we solve are also problems that applications want to solve. I made up some, some user stories yesterday. So you might have a desktop application, like uh, before me there was a GNOME talk and there was a contact application shown. You might want to have these contacts stored in an LDAP server and deliver them to the contact app. But then, do you really want to build LDAP knowledge into your app? And if you do, do you really want to solve all these problems like failover, service discovery, caching, all these? These are not easy problems. A web application might need to uh, display groups a user is a member of and uh, maybe assign some roles based on these users. And just retrieving what groups a user is a member of is also not a really easy problem. Or uh, I have a typo there. Uh, or a user might want to uh, control access to application with something like GPOs that I'll talk about earlier. There's many more probably. And of course, you can just hack on your application. Whatever programming language you use, there are probably libraries that allow you to talk to LDAP or Active Directory and whatnot. But how are you going to authenticate to LDAP? Active Directory by default doesn't read, allow you to read unauthenticated. Uh, what about caching? What if the server goes down? Uh, failover I also talked about. Uh, every LDAP server out there has a different way of, uh, or there are several ways of storing what groups is the user member of. SSSD already knows quite a few of them. And what's important these days is what about resource consumption, which is these days it's getting also more and more traction because uh, these days you run a lot of containers in, um, uh, on one machine. And if each of these containers runs its own app, then each app would talk to the server and there was maybe too many connections towards the server. SSSD only opens a single connection. So we designed something that we call the info pipe. Uh, it is a DBus interface. And I'm actually not sure why we call it info pipe. Someone else came up with the name. And the, this DBus interface lets you access all the data that SSSD knows about users, groups, even the domains. Like if you are connected to an Active Directory, you can query the status of the Active Directory. And you can look up the users and groups in the Active Directory by their name, which is what you mostly want to do. You can look them up by their user ID, which might be interesting for some file system application that just sees the UID. And you can look them up by the certificate. So that's when I talked about the smart cards. That's what's used. So the smart card is a certificate. The API is used to look up the user by certificate and present it to present the user further. Um, it's a DBus interface, which every time I talk about it, someone asks, why on earth did you choose DBus? Why didn't you just stick out a Unix pipe and let us talk to the SSD over a socket? Uh, but we are in the business of writing uh, Linux authentication daemon. We are not in the business of writing IPC. And I'm really not sure if we'll be able to come up with something better than DBus. Uh, because we want to provide this to apps, apps are written in billion different programming languages. DBus already has bindings. There are bindings for Python that I would like to show. There are bindings for Java, Ruby, I mean, you name it. There are several bindings for C. The latest, I think, was from the System Reproject. project. Um, DBus is introspectable, which I hope I will have time to show. So we don't have to know about the, what's, what the interface that are running on your system. You can just discover them. There are data types and type safety. So if, uh, if your function or method wants to accept a string, you really get a string. You don't have to care about parsing chars until you get a zero. And for apps, what might be 
useful, although this is not implemented in SSSD yet, is notification with signals. So an app can subscribe to a Dbus interface and say, uh, deliver me a signal when this part of what you export on the, on the system bus changes. This might be a good idea for the phone apps, right? So if the user changes his phone, the phone app gets a notification from Dbus and redraws the, the interface. Um, so this is a demo I would really like to do. And uh, also, with the IP, again, with the IPA server, uh, I would like to show how to get a phone number of the admin account. Find again the notes. Hopefully, it'll be faster this time. All right. So, first, let's try it with uh, from a shell. And really easy example. Um, so, the first thing when we want to uh, access some data of, of a user, we need to identify the user on the dbus bus. So I called a method. It's on the, well, it's wrapped, unfortunately. The, the end of the second line, beginning of the third line, you can see that I called a method called uh, orch free desktop ssd info pipe users find by name. And I want to find the user called admin. And what I got in return is a path. So the user admin has a unique identifier on the system bus. And now I have the path. I can query some data about the user. So one and two. What? I wonder if, oh, I know what's going on. I tried it in a different VM. Let's. Oh my god, live demos. I will never do live demos again. Yeah. So I want to talk about this anyway. Uh, what the interface uh, publishes on the bus by default. We don't want to disclose all the information that are on the, in the directory because there might be something you don't want anyone to see. So. Uh, by the only attributes that are published by default is what you can do, what you can retrieve anyway from the command line, like username, user ID, home directory, and so on. Uh, so what, uh, what I need to do is to add a lot more attributes. And I had it in my notes later, so I just copy it so I don't have a typo or anything. So I say that user should also publish telephone number. And let's see if also the... And I also need to, uh, to tell SSSD to actually fetch this attribute for the user because we don't fetch all the attributes by default. It might be too many. And this is harder than it looks. Phone number, no typo. Still no telephone number. Uh, uh, let's actually try on the VM where I did practice it. So 
So we can retrieve admin. And let's try if it works now. Yeah. Sorry, I probably did something wrong in the config. So anyway, here we can see that with shell, we are able to retrieve completely custom attribute. And this probably looks like a small deal, but really there's a lot that SSSD does in the background. It resolves the server to connect to, authenticates to the server with Kerberos, caches the user, and only then gives you the attributes. And what attributes you choose is completely configurable. Um, because I talked about apps, I also would like to show you the same from Python. So from Python, I connect to the connect to the Dbus. This is the, so in the bus, uh, the users are on a special path. That's the org 3 desktop SSD info pipe users. <laughs> no? Connect to the interface. Look up the user by his name. I can now. Yeah, so this is the path that we already saw in the show. And request the actual object. We are interested in the properties interface, so I connect to that. This is all debug stuff. This is not related to SSSD, but I just wanted to show that, yes, this already works from, from a program. Um, connect to the interface. And finally, we request the, uh, the telephone number. And on the second line from the bottom, you can see that there is a dictionary that contains a string called telephone number. And that telephone number contains one, two, three, four, five, six. And this is just a Python type. So from this point on, I can already. Yeah, I forgot to assign it here. Extra letters. What? I saw it's there. I can see there is a dictionary called telephone number. Huh? It shouldn't. Anyway, I don't want to delay the demo anymore. Uh, this should be a, just a Python attribute which you can just use in the phone app or whatever. So we <laughs> already saw a bit of the demo notes when I tried to fix the demo. So the service in the SSSD conf is called IFP, stands for InfoPipe. By default, only root can talk to this service. Uh, other users can be added with, a, with the option. We, so far, we only uh, have access control based, based on UIDs. So there is the uh, uh, DBus allows you to get the UID of whatever is talk, whoever is talking to the uh, SSSD, and we only allow those. We would like to work on Polkit integration next. Um, we already saw that you need to allow extra attributes. This is more if somebody would like to follow the talk next time. Uh, apps often want to also authenticate. Right now, the only interface on Linux that is usable is spam. But it's too tight to the OS level. We already got requests to come up with something for SSSD so that you can authenticate without PAM, and even more importantly, you can authenticate users that don't have the POSIX attributes that normally PAM needs, like uh, uh, UID and GID and so on. I'm really not sure if we want to do, go that way. I'm not sure if I want to be in the business of designing an authentication API. 
Uh, here are some links. I'll put the whole presentation uh, up so you can follow if you want. But right now we're running out of time already. Uh, no time for demo, sorry. But this is the last thing I would like to talk about before letting Howard on the stage and run his video. So SSSD has a, already an ecosystem of apps around it. And I would like to show you two. One is Realm D, and the second is Mod Lookup Identity. Realm D is something that lets you configure very easily a client against a remote server. So um, normally, you would need to write the SSSD config file by yourself, get a key tab for the, for the AD client, and configure a whole bunch of stuff. Realm D is something that lets you to do this with a single command. And the best thing about Realm D is that it's a debug service. It's not a daemon. The D is kind of misleading. Uh, the fact that it's a DBS service means that it's really, really easy to integrate with it. And Howard will show later Yast configuring uh, a SUSE client. I really think Yast would be much better off than using Roundy than whatever homegrown thing there is. Uh, the API that, has, that Roundy has is discoverable, so we can just uh, run some, some DBus introspection program, and it's really, really easy to use. No time for demo, sorry. Next time. The last thing, and then Howard, this is Howard turn, is uh, an Apache module called look up, Mode Lookup Identity. So when I showed the retrieving the users uh, with Dbus, we, uh, a person on our team wrote an Apache module called Mode Lookup Identity that lets you do this for web applications that run Apache. So I'm not a big Apache expert, but I understand that if a user is authenticated against Apache, there is a environment variable called remote user. What you can say is, so you can get this module, configure it, and if you configure it with something like lookup user attribute mail into a variable remote user mail, then when this user logs in, there will be a, an attribute remote user mail that has his email attribute fetched from the LDAP, and your web application can uh, use it. This module also supports lookups by certificate, not just by username. And because we are running out of time, I would like Howard to show his demo. There is a bunch of other slides that I didn't have time for, but I'll be around for a couple of hours, so just catch me if you like. Oops. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks very much for attending this presentation. My name is Howard, and I work at SUSE, maintaining um, the software components that are involved in identity management, such as uh, OpenLDAP, MIT Kerberos, SSD, and more. Um, so um, we, have, we have heard that Microsoft has this very popular directory implementation called Microsoft Active Directory. And we all know that Microsoft loves Unix, uh, Linux. So um, let's see how we can bridge the identities that are stored on Microsoft Active Directory to a Linux client with help from SSD. And uh, before proceeding with the demo, I would like to say a big thank you for Jakub and his team for the wonderful work on SSD, which has truly made it simpler to integrate identities on Linux clients. So let's take a look at the video. All right, here we have a Windows 2016 server. And let us take a look at our lovely Active Directory. So let us create a new user who is going to log in on Linux client. And let's give him a name, namey MacNameFace, which is a popular name at the moment. Active Directory can store all sorts of attributes, not only the basic details about the person, but also, uh, very importantly, the membership of a, uh, of a um, user. Now let's jump back into the user and uh, um, do some Linux-specific bits in it. Let's take a look at the LDAP attribute. 
Microsoft Active Directory is a fully functional um, uh, directory implementation, and it not only supports all of the attributes that are specific to Microsoft, but also we are free to edit the, uh, the Unix-specific attributes in, in Microsoft Active Directory without uh, much additional effort. So here we tell Active Directory that this user has a home directory under slash home. Next, we are going to uh, jump on to um, SUDA Linux. Uh, in this case, is an uh, open SUDA. Pardon me? Time's up. Oh, OK. Uh, OK, let's just uh, play the video. So let's visit um, Yast. In the user logon management, we are going to allow the Microsoft domain user to log on to this computer. We enter the domain name and uh, tell SSD that this is going to be a Active Directory server. Now we are going to enter credentials of an Active Directory user who is eligible to enroll new computers as a Microsoft Active Directory clients. And after some points and clicks, we are almost done. So let us ask the operating system if we have now the new user naming, and uh, there was a response. So um, let's quickly jump back to um, the login screen and uh, log in as the new user. And several moments later, we shall see our lovely Linux desktop, and we know that the authentication is, is carried out with help from SSD and uh, credentials from Active Directory. So there's our lovely user. Thanks very much. OK. Our time is up, so I guess catch me somewhere around if you have questions. And sorry about the bot demos. <laughs>